the Lord and welcome to this edition of our series of daily broadcasts which we have tagged the State of the Union. The union that is between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to me. Now, yesterday, we drew, yes, on yesterday's episode of this series of broadcasts, we drew attention to the business, we drew attention to, to the business of abiding and bearing fruit. From John chapter 15. From John chapter 15. Where Jesus said, every branch, every branch in me that beareth fruit or that beareth not fruit. So there are two branches in question. First of all, both of them are in him. That is to say, both of them are Christians. One set is bearing fruit and the other is not. Now the set that is not bearing fruit, Jesus says, will be cut off and burnt with fire. But the set that is bearing fruit will be purged so that it can bring forth more fruit. So that it can bring forth more fruit. So the issue then becomes there are Christians who are not going to make the harvest, which we call rapture, because they were not fruit bearing. We established that much yesterday. Today, let us consider the matter a bit more deeply for clarification. Now, in the story of the fig tree, this is what the Bible tells us. So we we'll introduce our subject of today by reading from Mark chapter 11 about the fig tree. And on the morrow, from verse 12, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. That's Jesus. And he, and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. He cursed the fig tree. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. He cursed the fig tree. The reason Jesus cursed the fig tree was because he came for its fruit and there was none. It didn't matter to Jesus that the Bible says, for example, that it was not yet time. So, like we said from yesterday's broadcast, that should tell us this story is not about the fig tree. Or rather, the action of Jesus here 
is really not about the victory. Do you really think that Jesus could have been that angry because he couldn't get some figs to eat and then he would lose it to the point of causing a victory? What is he going to gain? What is the kingdom of God going to gain by a cost victory? Rather, Jesus was trying to teach a principle of the kingdom, which is the business of fruit bearing. He was saying, just like he said from John chapter 15, which hopefully we will look at before we end today's broadcast. He was saying, if you don't bear fruit, you are at risk of something like this happening to you. So John the Baptist referred to non-fruit bearing as a risk for being burnt with fire. Jesus made the same reference in John chapter 15. Now in Mark 11 from verse 12 about the fig tree, we see the same reaction. So that we can say that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the scripture is consistent about this matter. Fruit bearing is the whole accord, is the whole issue. Now, of course, we have heard the saying that the apple does not fall far from the tree. Who cares where the apple falls, so long as I can find the apple? So this is really not about the geographical location of the apple compared to the tree. So this is, again, a parable. Speaking about the semblance between the apple and the tree. That statement is usually made in reference to a child and the parent. When that statement is used, the speaker is trying to say of the child that he looks like his parent or is behaving like his parent. But a fruit and the tree are always in reference. The apple does not fall far from the tree. We understand it to mean that the speaker is saying somebody looks like somebody else or is behaving like somebody else, usually a parent figure. So we can understand that fruit bearing actually means not just that the mango tree must bring out mangoes, but fruit bearing really means showing forth evidence that you are what you say you are. So that fig tree essentially at that critical moment was lying to Jesus. A hypocrite. You call yourself a fig tree, then where is the fig that is supposed to identify you? Jesus, here with John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 and then in John chapter 15, is telling us you are identifiable by the proof that is in you of who you say that you are. So he says, for example, a good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and a bad tree brings forth bad fruit. But the point is, the tree must bear fruit. Now the fig tree didn't have figs on it. So Jesus cursed the tree. Now if we continue reading, we will see that just a short time later, the tree had withered. Next thing would be that it would be cut down and will be burned. Or as we say locally, it will become firewood. Something that had such potential 
24 hours earlier. Now it's just wood for the fire. So what is it about the fruit and the mother tree, if you like? Jesus in John chapter 15, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges that it may bring forth more fruit. Then he gives us the formula for fruit bearing. In verse 4 he says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. That is, stay close. Abide in me. Derive your existence from and in me. Why? That's the only way you can express my life in you. Which is what we are referring to now as fruit bearing. You know, while it may be convenient to think of soul winning as fruit bearing, it is not quite accurate. Generally, we will accept it because it doesn't harm us to accept it as fruit bearing. But it is not in itself the essence of fruit bearing. Now, in Acts chapter, th in Acts chapter 4, the Bible tells us what exactly fruit bearing ought to look like or what it ought to be. After the arrest of Peter and John, in verse 13, now they are in front of the Jewish leaders. And in verse 13 it says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They saw something in the men which looked like Jesus. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. This is the crux of the matter. That they had been with Jesus, obviously, is a reference to abiding with Jesus. Now, these fellows had been with Jesus for three odd years, every day. And yesterday we asked a question. Imagine Peter or any of the twelve saying on one of those days um, excuse me guys I have to go I have to separate myself because I want to go and pray or I have to separate myself there on yonder because I need to do some personal Bible study Bible study unto what or unto whom so Jesus corrected that, that kind of thinking when he said in John chapter 5 verse 39 he says you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life he said but these are they which testify of me he said and you won't come to me that you might have life so if the life is in Jesus why seek anything that pertains to that life anywhere else but with Jesus now this is the reason Jesus says abide in me if you abide in me and I in you, now you are guaranteed fruit bearing. What's the fruit bearing? Now you are guaranteed that you will be able to perform like me. Whether it be in the actual business of soul winning, or whether it is just in the reflection of the character of Jesus, or the nature of Jesus, or in fact the swag of Jesus just doing things like him you know those two who were on the road to Emmaus 
and they met somebody who turned out to be Jesus on the way. Much later, as he broke bread, suddenly they recognized him in the act of breaking bread. Ah, that's him. So he must have had a unique way of breaking bread. Until he did that thing, their eyes were not opened to recognize him. They had walked some distance, a couple of miles, I guess, and they didn't recognize him. But they said to themselves, did our hearts not burn within us while he yet spoke with us? Now, upon breaking bread, they finally recognized him. Now, what about after his resurrection? Peter said, I go a fishing, and the rest went with him. As they returned, there was a man standing at the shore. And he said, gentlemen, did you catch fish? And Peter, recognizing the voice of his master, you see that? He recognized his master's voice. And he immediately exclaimed, Master, there is something about Jesus that you are not going to get by distance learning. You are going to get it close up, abiding in him. Having the experience and expression of the life directly by relationship, close up with him. Now, of course, that is going to be by the Spirit today. So that the longer you stay in fellowship, in communion with the Spirit, the longer you will be staying in fellowship with Jesus. Now, that's the place and that's the time when he gets to change us into his image. And then we begin to do things like him. We begin to talk like him. We begin to operate like him. Even our mannerisms begin to mirror his own. I said to someone the other day, I may have been a naturally taciturn person, but quietness on the inside and therefore on the outside did not come by my natural taciturn disposition. It came in spending time with him in quiet. And having spent so much time in quiet, it has rubbed off. Many things get to rub off the longer we stay with him. The longer we stay with him. It is, of course, an ongoing process. The longer we stay with him. So he said, abide in me. Abide in me. Now, there's no geographical place where we can abide with him now compared to then when they had him physically 24 hours a day for all of three plus years. Now, we don't have that. But we have something of it in the Spirit, by the Spirit, in things like the communion of the Holy Spirit. So that if you choose to engage in what I like to call distance learning, rather than come into fellowship with Him, you choose to gather your material from the Scriptures, which before now we have generally accepted as okay. But if we consider the words of Jesus Himself, it cannot be enough. He said he's going to say to some people, depart from me, I don't know you. These people did wonders in his name. Who else uses the name of Jesus if they are not Christians? But he says that he's going to say to them on that day, depart from me, I don't know you. You workers of iniquity. What is the iniquity in question? You are bearing something that looks like fruit, minus the life of it. 
having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Yesterday, we made some allusion to religion as different from relationship. We can go through the motions of religion and never bear the fruit. And there be many like that. We are doing all the usual stuff. You go to church. You hang out with the brethren. You love the brethren, in fact. At least it seems so. You pray. You give alms. You help the poor. You do all the stated Christian things. But the evidence of the life is not in you. And so the life cannot get expression from you. There is only one way for that to happen. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. Make your existence about me. Everything. Everything. Did the Bible not say, for example, that those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God? Did the Bible not say, for example, in John chapter 1, verse 12, that those that received him, he gave them power to become sons? Why? In becoming sons, now they are able to express the life. So how do you receive someone? By opening your arms to take them in, abiding in him. So Jesus caused the victory. I'm told that in, in some military circles are here, that if you are on sentry duty and you are found to be on guard duty and you are sleeping with your eyes closed, with your eyes open, that you are going to be disciplined severely. You are standing on sentry duty and you are sleeping with your eyes open because your, your eyes being open gives the impression that you are on guard that you are watchful. And so everybody else relaxes because they think that you are doing your job. So you are putting them at double risk. Not only are you not doing your job, you are making them relax thinking that you are doing your job. Double, double jeopardy, as they say. Or as we say locally, double wahala for dead body. Punishment will be very harsh. Now that's why Jesus caused the fig tree. You are standing there and saying that I am a fig tree. But the proof of it is absent. So if somebody were death hungry and came to you for food, you would not be able to live up to the expectation. Perhaps this is the same reason why the father, the husband man, will take away, you see, he says he will take away. He says every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the father will take it away. What is take away? He will cut it off the tree. He will cut it off the tree. If you are not going to be productive, then you are useless. Now, if we go over to Hebrews chapter 6, you see again another dire circumstance. It speaks of the ground that constantly receives water, nourishment, and is not bringing forth the fruit for that work. It says in Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 7, for example, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it, 
and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed, received blessing from God. That's fruit bearing. It says, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. That's a fourth witness. Hebrews chapter 6, 7 and 8. So what are we saying? God says, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return. You see, he says they are his people. So they are still on the tree. They are his people. They are still on the tree. They are still connected to the tree. But rather than derive life and the appurtenances thereof, and all the things that pertain to life, rather than derive life from the tree to which they are attached, they are receiving from everywhere else except from the vine. So you want to understand, for example, about how to grow your business. You go to Google. You go to Harvard Business School or wherever it is that they teach such things. How to grow your business. How to make your business competitive. Are you a businessman or are you a Christian who is a businessman? Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. We've seen that statement but we have never really applied it outside of the circumstances in which it was used. You look like it. You look the part, but you are not producing the results concomitant with that. All four accounts I've just given say that you are going to be burnt with fire. That's a Christian we're talking about. If you don't live the life, if you don't show forth evidence that Christ is really in you, you are going to be burnt with fire. It's going to be a sad commentary of an ending for you. Now, I didn't come to make threats, but the Father sent me saying, tell my people to return to me. Come back from all those places, all those enclaves from which you are getting what seems to be life. He says, come back and begin to derive life from the vine, which is Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you stand the risk of not bearing fruit. In fact, you are going to bear some fruit. It's just going to be evil fruit, according to God. You are going to bear fruit which looks like the fruit of the world. Because you are operating by the wisdom of the world. Not by the life of Jesus. So your fruit is going to look like the world. It's going to be compatible with what is prevalent in the world system. So the world may even applaud you. Unfortunately, in that very applause, you confuse issues, you confuse things, because you look like it, but the life of it is not in you. Your prosperity, your seeming prosperity, seems to be of God. But God himself is not in it. Your prosperity is not a fruit of his presence in your life. It is a fruit of your manipulating the principles of the world. So he says, tell my people to return to me. It's not too late yet. But it is getting nearer by the day. And nobody can determine when the day will come. But I'm told that is the season of reward is here. Where every man will receive in himself reward for what he has done in his body. Good for good, evil for evil. May that not be what we are talking about here now. A time for burning, 
or a time for blessing. So while it is yet day, let us call upon the name of the Lord in returning to Him so that that which pertains to the life that is in Christ will begin to take root in us so that it can be expressed in us. So that of a truth, somebody can say, they look like Jesus. They have been with Jesus. They behave like him. Tell my people to return to me, say the Lord. I'll be back again with you on yet another edition of this series of broadcasts. Same time tomorrow in the name of Jesus. God bless you.